get tacos. Heck yeah, I'm always down for ta-ta-ta-ta-taco. Ta, 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 oh my gosh, I'm so hungry. Me too, dude. I'm so ready. Taco Tuesday is every Tuesday. I hope nobody steals our stuff. God, I can't believe we ate all those tacos. Ah, you don't know me as well as you think. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Someone's hey. stealing our cool stuff. All of our sick stuff. Just let me do my job and nobody gets hurt. What's your job? Is it taking our stuff? Because that's ours. Somebody hired me to take your cool stuff and that's what I'm going to do. Not my cool stuff. Whoa. Hey, where'd she go? I feel like she's close by. Hey Chris, have you ever seen this movie called Ant-Man and the Wasp? I saw it with you, actually. Oh yeah, it was fun. <laughs> it was, I liked it more than the first Ant-Man movie. Let's go ahead and recreate an effect from that movie. I'm thinking this effect with the ghost, the ghost character, it's like a ghost in the shell meets the matrix type effect. Are you down? Yeah, let's do this. When we shot the dodging lasers and dodging bullets scene, we asked Amy to move quickly at first and then slow way down with extreme easing into position and then holding that spot for a brief period. The first thing that we're gonna do with this is run through the footage and find all the parts where she's moving quickly, split the layer at those points with Control shift d and then speed each of those bits up to be about three to five frames long each. Real quick. What is your character's motivation? To steal all of the sick stuff. Next, we are going to pre-compose those and add an adjustment layer on top. And on that, we're gonna add the echo effect. We'll change our timing to something extremely low, something like negative 0.01. The default is negative 0.0333. That's about one frame's worth of time. So 0.01 is significantly faster than our frame rate. But since we have our footage sped up, we're gonna get these nice in-between frame echoes. We also wanna set the echo operator to maximum. Maximum. This will make it so the echoes only appear on the brightest parts of the footage, but they don't add any additional brightness, so it's not gonna blow out or get too crazy. This can also add some doubling up in your frames and cause some funkiness. Since the echo is on an adjustment layer, you can just turn down the opacity of that layer when you don't need the echoes. Why are you giggling? Opacity. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So this is already looking pretty cool. If you don't need all that crazy colorful stuff, you could just stop here, but that ain't our style. Mm -mm. I don't think you have to direct a film to have a good film. I think you need to let the film become. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Uh, as Nietzsche once said, uh, it was something in German, so I didn't understand it. Yeah, I'm sorry, I was very distracted. For the rest of the effects, we're gonna need Amy matted out. We should have Matt Damon zooming in and just bumping her out of frame so she's getting matted out. <laughs> Are you sure that's a good joke? No. <laughs> <laughs> For the rest of the effects, we need Amy matted out. So I'm just gonna painstakingly rotoscope her. It's only gonna take about a week. It's not a big deal. Uh, Adrian, we probably wouldn't have to rotoscope if we had used a green screen. I uh, I didn't realize that was an option. Yeah. Uh, Adrian, are you sure you don't want a green screen for this? I feel like no, green. no, it's fine. It's I mean, fine. We green screen. It's kind of want to. No, no, no. Okay. What do you know? All right. All right, fair oh. enough. All right, so you might want to add some additional echoes that don't move. To do this, we just went to the points where the talent finishes her fast move, duplicated that layer, then freeze framed it, moved it just a little, added a fast blur, and keyframed it to fade out over time. We put most of these on a light and transfer mode, but feel free to experiment. Boop, 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 boop
That's my experimenting sound effect. Now, an interesting thing when you're directing a piece such as this, you want to keep in mind that the world you are creating is not real. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? The world is fictional, and you need to embrace that fiction. You need to take your ideas. Uh, Chris, and no, make we have. Okay, yeah, man. sorry. Okay. If you want to have your talent disappear for a little bit, it might be cool to have some colorful displacement behind them. So in a new comp, I'm just going to drop in the rotoscoped actor over a clean plate. Put a displacement map effect on your background using your actor's layer as the source. Turn up the horizontal and vertical displacement to taste, and then I'll click the stopwatch on both of those and add an expression. We went with wiggle 1, 100. Duplicate that layer thrice and add the shift channels effect to those duplicates. On one of those duplicates, turn off the green and blue channel, leaving only the red. On the other two, do the same, but leave one blue and one green. Set all three of these layers to the add transfer mode, and that's going to change the colors back to normal. Except since we have this wiggle expression, the displacement is going to be slightly different on each layer. So you can see the colors separating and making this cool moving chromatic aberration effect. Ooh, it's so pretty. Now you can put your rotoscope talent layer back on top of that and play with its opacity for a cool effect. Ooh, bossity. If you want to add a little bit of glitchiness, we can do this using an asset from footagecrate.com. If you search for glitch, you'll find a lot of great stuff. The one we picked for this effect is called Glitched Transition Digital Tech. Just download that and drop it into a comp with your rotoscope talent. Put a displacement effect on your talent's layer and use the glitch layer as your source. It's that easy. If you want some colorful glitches, you can use the same chromatic aberration displacement technique we used before. Ooh, so pretty. Oh yeah, it's looking really cool. For this final effect, we're gonna just backtrack a little bit. Make a new, <laughs> new comp with just your roto talent and copy the same echo effect we used at the beginning part. Duplicate this layer thrice and slightly change the parameters of the echo effect. Do the same thing as before where we isolated the color channels of these layers and set them all to add. Now we have some colorful echoes. Neat. You can drop this comp into your main comp with a light and transfer mode for extra pop of color. In the Ant-Man and the Wasp film, ghost effects were never perfectly consistent. Sometimes she caught up with her echo, sometimes her echoes trailed behind her, sometimes the effect is extremely colorful and sometimes it's just not. Feel free to pick and choose which of these steps you want to follow, do whatever works for your shot, and have fun with it. Yeah, definitely just make it your own. And make it awesome. Yeah, and make it awesome. For sound design, uh, we use the electricity hums. That really drove most of the sound design for the ghost effects. We use them all. We use the low hum. The enter hums, the exit hums, looping hums. We used all them hums. To accent her movement, we sprinkled in a few glitch sound effects from the sci fi section. Those can be really overpowering, though, so make sure to drop. I'm sorry, I was overpowering you with my glitches. <laughs> These can be very overpowering, as Chris is demonstrating right now. So make sure to drop the levels if you use these. Subtlety is key. We also used a few bass drop sound effects. Bass drop number 12, which is a pro asset, and bass drop number 5, which is free. These both have a kind of sci-fi vibe to them, which played really nicely with the other sound effects. Hey, sound effects, play nicely over there. And they did. When you're messing with these, try changing up the rate of them. Maybe even reverse the speed of some of them to get a good variation. And that's how we created this radical effect. Hopefully you learned some useful tips and tricks that you can use in your own videos. Join us next week as we try to build up our collection of cool stuff again. I'm kind of bummed that somebody stole all our cool stuff. It was an okay sketch, I guess, but the ramifications are something we have to deal with now. Yeah, at least you have a cool bionic eyeball. That's true. <laughs> yeah. All right, everyone, join us next week and remember to make it awesome. Later, Crater.